Let's talk about this thing. Off the record, I'm 8-Bit Esquire. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, I started this YouTube channel of mine about four months ago, maybe a little under four months ago, and so far the reaction has just been awesome. There's been over 11,000 views on my videos thus far, which I think is insane. When I started this channel back in February, I got some really great advice from a good friend of mine, uh, Scarlet Sprites, who told me just to have fun with it and not to get too bogged down with the numbers. And as I do with most good advice that I get from my peers, I tend to just ignore it completely. And uh, yeah, I just dove headfirst into all of the analytics that YouTube provides. Uh, for its creators and all of its channels, and it really gives you some really good feedback. The two biggest lessons I learned through all of these analytics is, number one, you guys don't like sitting and watching a guy spout off terrible jokes about retro video games for 30 to 40 minutes at a time. The second lesson I learned is that you guys are literally guys, like nothing but dudes, just a massive sausage fest in my channel. So. In order to, uh, I don't know, make the most of these lessons that I've learned, I decided to make a series, like off the record here, that's a little more friendly to the YouTube algorithm. These are going to be shorter episodes without my face, so maybe I'm not scaring away the ladies. And uh, yeah, just talking about some items I have in my collection that, I don't know, maybe don't warrant a full-blown 30 to 40 minute trial, but at least they're interesting enough to talk about for a few minutes. So I couldn't think of a more fitting item in my collection to talk about than the Nintendo Color TV game Block Kazushi. The Color TV game series was Nintendo's first foray into home video games. Prior to that, Nintendo was making children's toys and trading cards and things of that nature in Japan. And in response to the ever-growing trend of home video games, Nintendo decided to get into the industry with a joint collaboration with Mitsubishi. In 1977, Nintendo released its first color TV game, which was the Color TV Game 6. Essentially nothing more than a Pong ripoff. There was no controllers, you just had two... Uh, rotary paddles that are mounted to the console itself, and yeah, it was just two-player Pong. Really nothing more than a clone of the Atari Pong home variant that was released two years earlier in the United States. But really, we're here to talk about the fourth entry in the Color TV game lineup. That, of course, would be Color TV game Block Kazushi, which its literal translation is Block Breaker, and... Yeah, it's yet another ripoff from Nintendo, this time ripping off Atari's Breakout, which was released in 1976 and designed by none other than Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. Now the reason Black Kazushi is so historically important is because this is the very first home video game that Nintendo ever produced on their own. As you recall, the previous three entries were all co-developed with Mitsubishi, but because Nintendo did everything in-house for the very first time, this is the very first home video game console proudly sporting the classic, iconic Nintendo logo. The first thing you'll notice about Block Kazushi is the case itself. It's way more attractive and appealing than the previous entries in the color TV game lineup, and that's because the housing was designed by none other than Shigeru Miyamoto. Black Kazushi was actually one of his first assignments at Nintendo. And yeah, despite being not too long removed from school, I think Miyamoto knocked this thing out of the park. I love the bright orange plastic that was used for the housing. I just think it just has this neat, clean, geometric industrial look with the switches and the levers and the knobs and the I don't know, man, this thing is just oozing late 70s vibes, yet it also has this 
real clean, minimalist, mid-century look. I don't know, I, Miyamoto is just a genius. Block Kazushi is Nintendo model number CTG-BK6. It was released in 1979 at an introductory retail price of 13,500 yen, which in US dollars adjusted for inflation is about $380. And despite that high price tag, Block Kazushi actually sold pretty well in Japan. It was heavily marketed in Japanese department stores where Nintendo would host internal competitions and winners of these competitions would get these awesome Nintendo Color TV game medals. I mean, could you imagine having one of these things? I've scoured Japanese auction sites and I have yet to come across one of them. So I don't know, man, if you have one, leave me a comment below. I'd, I'd love to check it out. I think these things are so neat. But enough about the business and the historical aspect of this thing. Is it actually fun to play? And yeah, I think so. This is actually a really fun single player experience that I find myself hooking up from time to time. While on the topic of hooking up this thing, color TV game Block Kazushi only outputs RF and in the original retail release, you'll see that there's an RF cable that is permanently mounted to the side of the plastic casing. Now, this particular model that I have, I'd had modified by my good friend Mobius Strip Tech. And now I have a console with an RCA jack on the side, which allows me to use my own heavily shielded coaxial cable rather than the uh, pre wired RF cable that was really thin, not shielded at all, and would bring in a whole lot of interference. So now the game looks slightly less crappy because there's much less interference on the screen. Now, of course, color TV game Block Kazushi is a Japanese console. And when you're dealing with RF and Japanese hardware, you have to understand that these are outputting Japanese frequencies. So it's looking for Japanese channel one or Japanese channel two. Fortunately here, I'm playing this game on a Japanese CRT television. Specifically, I'm playing on model number C14R27, by NEC. An absolutely beautiful 14 inch color television made by NEC, probably at some point in the mid 1990s. Now, if you don't have a Japanese CRT television lying around, and why don't you? But really, if you have any interest in picking up Block Kazushi for yourself, I would recommend you check out my very first trial, The People vs. the Nintendo Famicom where I'll get into a little bit of information about playing Japanese RF signals on American televisions. So yeah, let's talk about the game itself. Block Kazushi features six different screens that you can choose from right on the front of the panel. Simply slide the switch from left to right to pick which screen you want to play on, and then hit the bright red reset button to load the screen. To the right of this switch, you have the ball selector switch, which, um, yeah, helps you pick the number of balls you want to play with. So the first screen is just traditional breakout. The second screen removes a row. The third screen adds a row on the bottom. I guess this is like a like a backstop for you. Let's see if that let's see if that works. Yeah, it's like a backstop. Like an easy mode, I guess, for the kids. Uh, this screen, your objective is to clear out all the blocks and it times you. Okay, that's enough of that. The fifth screen is actually my favorite screen. This is a uh, wedge design and the objective is to get the ball into the back of the wedge and knock out these four blinking bricks. Come on. Oh! 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 Come on, we got this. We got this. Come on, get up there. Get, don't. Nope. It got smaller. It got small. That's what she said. For an antiquated game released in 1979, I think the visuals are bright and colorful. It's actually not a bad game to look at, and yeah, man, it's Breakout. It's a lot of fun. You're not going to get much in the way of the sound department. It's just the 
typical beeps and bloops that you come to expect with Pong. But yeah, overall I think this is about as good as a first generation video game experience can get. It's fun single player action, it's addictive gameplay, it's graphics or I don't know, not bad on the eyes and yeah man that case, the design, it's just beautiful and not to mention the whole historical aspect, it being Nintendo's first in-house video game, the first time you've ever seen that Nintendo logo on a home video game console, all designed by the godfather, Shigeru Miyamoto himself. I, this is a must-buy, in my opinion. So, yeah, let's talk about pricing. Uh, prices on this thing are really all over the place, and it's really largely dependent upon the condition of the casing. It's not uncommon to find block kazushis with deep gouges all over the orange plastic casing, and this was caused by the RF cable that would come out the side of the console. As players were done with the game, they would typically wrap the RF cable around the console itself, and over time, whatever chemicals were inside of these RF cables, they would tend to melt away the plastic on the housing. So yeah, if you're scouring eBay or any Japanese auction site for one of these things, be prepared to see deep gouges all over the housing, which is really unfortunate given how beautiful this console is. My particular model does have its fair share of nicks and gouges, but it's not too bad, and honestly, I think it maybe, I don't know, gives the console some character. and. But if you want a pristine example of Black Kazushi, be prepared to spend upwards of over $300. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to try to repair the plastic yourself with uh, maybe some plastic space filler and some sandpaper and some paint, you could easily find one of these for under $100. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap up our very first episode of Off the Record. I'd like to give a special thank you to the author of Before Mario, Mr. Eric Voskel. Eric has an incredible pre-Famicom collection of Nintendo toys and knickknacks and doodads, including the Color TV game series. And as any smart collector out there knows, the best way to collect is to monetize your collection. I own a copy of this book. I find it to be terrific, and if you're interested in picking up a copy for yourself, I've left a link in the description below. And yeah, let me know if you like this format. I really liked making this off-the-record episode, and I think I might do more. Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think. Leave me a like and subscribe to this channel. I've got a few more series planned and some other neat ideas that I think you guys are really going to enjoy, so stay tuned. With all that said, I'm 8-Bit Esquire. Court is adjourned. We'll see you next time.